Hello everyone, my name is Cameron, welcome back to the channel, and today, as the title suggests, we are doing the TakeOver New York 2019 predictions. I'm very excited, I can't wait for this pay-per-view. Now, I will say this, I'm very upset that Tommaso Ciampa does not get to be in this pay-per-view. God, oh, God damn it. I was looking forward to Gargano Ciampa 4, is it 4 at this point? My shirt is being very staticky to me right now, and I don't know why. Like, it's going straight back to my body as soon as I move it off of me. I don't know why. Whatever. It might be something to do with my setup being completely metal and me having just touched it a lot. Um, yeah, I'm very, I'm very upset that that doesn't happen. But the match for the NXT Championship is still probably the match I'm looking forward to the most. We finally get to see Matt Riddle. The Super King of Bros gets to go after a championship, which makes me very, very happy. Uh, there's a nice Fatal 4-Way for the NXT Women's Championship, which kind of worries me with my choice. Um, we have Aleister Black and Ricochet going for the tag titles. Man, this pay... Oh, and we have Walter making his NXT debut going against Pete Dunne. I'm... At least I think this is his NXT debut. I think he's just mostly been doing stuff on NXT UK. Um, but I'm very excited for this. So without further ado, let's get right into the prediction. Starting with the NXT Women's Championship Fatal 4 match. We have the reigning defending champion Shayna Baszler going against Io Shirai, Bianca Belair, and Kyrie Sane. Now, many of you probably remember that last year around the same exact time, there was a Fatal 4-Way match. Wait, was it last year around this time or was it? It might have been the Royal Rumble pay, uh, takeover where Amber Moon won the championship in a fatal four-way match just to lose at the next takeover event. Uh, to Shayna Baszler, actually, if I remember correctly. Uh, it was, in fact, to Shayna Baszler. Um, and it was very... So I'm very scared that Shayna's going to be losing this. Now, however, in that situation, it was Asuka had relinquished the championship because she was injured, but still, you get the point. Wait, what? No, wait, that was two years ago. Is it two years ago? I don't remember exactly when it was. It was a while back. Let me just say that. It's before the Royal, it was definitely before the Royal Rumble. Yeah, I think it was the takeover event before Royal Rumble last year. I can't remember to be honest. But uh, my prediction is Kyrie Sane to win the championship. I think it's a bit too early to put it on Shirai, and I don't think they're going to give it to Bel Air because, to be honest, Bel Air is terrible. I don't like her in ring work. I don't like her on the mic work. She's just it, all around to me is a terrible individual in the ring. She's not very good, and uh, so I just can't see them putting the championship on her. They had, they didn't. She didn't win it the last Takeover event, so she's not going to win it this time. You know, uh, Kyrie would have the distinction, I think, of being the only three-time champ. Um, for the NXT Women's Championship, I think she'd be the she'd have that distinction of being the only three-time. Um, a lot of people are thinking this is gonna be Baszler's way of exiting um, NXT and going up to the main roster. Uh, it wouldn't be a shock if they decided to keep the championship on her and then still bring her up, and then she relinquishes it, and then there's some big battle royal type thing at the next Takeover event where a winner is decided. Um, however, I think that they've kind of gone away from the, okay, they're going to debut with the championship, unless it's a very dominant champion. Like, Tommaso Ciampa, I could have seen doing that. Like, having an actual main roster debut, not the weird thing that they've been doing with the NXT guys recently, where they're still in NXT, but they're also not in NXT. It's a very confusing thing, like Aleister Black and Ricochet, for instance. Um... But I think that they're definitely going to take the championship off of Shayna Baszler if she's going to have her actual main roster debut. Um, next, the NXT North American Championship. We have the current reigning champion, the Velveteen Dream, facing off this, against the Super King of Bros himself, Matt Riddle. Now, who did I choose for this? I don't remember who I chose for this. I did these a while back. Ah, I did choose Dream to retain, and here's why. I think Velveteen Dream is going to retain... Because Cassius Ono is going to somehow cost Matt Riddle the championship. Now, if you don't remember, Matt Riddle and Cassius Ono have been feuding for the past few months. And I think that even though that feud seems to have come to an end, from what I've seen at least, um, it looks like it's come to an end. I think Ono is going to cost Riddle the championship. Um, potentially even with Keith Lee eventually uh, or ending up coming out and beating down Ono with um, maybe the help of Riddle and Velveteen Dream. Um, or Velveteen Dream tries to help Ono. Who knows, to be honest. Um, I, but I think that Velveteen Dream is retaining this no matter what. 
it's not to say Matt Riddle's bad in the ring. It's not to say that it's too soon or anything like that. I think Matt Riddle could definitely do some good work with that championship. However, I think Velveteen Dream's reign has not lasted long enough. Um, and unless they're trying to push him into the main card scene or in the upper card of NXT's, you know, like the actual NXT championship, I can't see them taking the championship off of him yet. Velveteen Dream is fantastic. He's good on the mic. He's good in the ring. He has a shit ton of charisma. Um, and yeah, honestly, I'm excited to see who he decides to uh, pay homage to this um, take uh, tomorrow uh, at TakeOver. Uh, I'm hoping it's The Rock. I don't know why, but I'm really hoping it's The Rock. Next, we have the United Kingdom Championship. We have the longest reigning champion of the modern era, Pete Dunne, versus Walter. Um, I'm not I'm not too familiar with Walter, so this is me a very this is a match I'm kind of really looking forward to. It gets me to kind of see a little bit of what Walter can do in the ring. I know he's very good. That's from, from what I've heard, he's fantastic. Um, but I'm very excited to kind of see what he's like in the ring and uh, kind of formulate my own opinion on him. Uh, and yes, Pete Dunne, the longest reigning champion in the modern era, the the longest reigning UK champion, the fucking the Bruiser. I'm excited. I like Pete Dunne. He's awesome. So I'm very excited for this match. Uh, this is my. This is probably the match. This is probably tied for the NXT Championship match for what I'm most excited about because both of those matches. Let's just say this this Takeover card, except for the tag match. No offense to Ricochet and Aleister Black, but except for the tag match, this is a very very exciting uh, takeover card. I would have liked maybe an actual tag team. Not that Alistair Black and Ricochet haven't shown great work as a tag team over the past few months. I just think it's kind of a weird tag team to see together and kind of like, do we really need them facing the War Raiders? It's kind of obvious who's going to win that match, you know? Um, but yeah. And especially because Alistair Black and Ricochet are in a match for the SmackDown tag titles at Mania. It's like, are they really going to win both? I would have laughed if because uh, Raw, on Raw, they won, or they had a match against The Revival, which they lost by Countout, which is actually the first main roster loss for either of them. Not just as a tag team, but them in general. Um, even in singular by themselves, that was their first loss on the main roster. Um, I thought it would have been funny if they won the Raw tag titles, then at TakeOver they won the NXT tag titles, and then at Mania they won the SmackDown. I think that would be really stupid, but it would have been funny as well. Um... But yeah, uh, so on to my prediction for Pete Dunne and Walter. Uh, I've predicted Pete Dunne to retain. It's not, again, it's not to say that Walter's bad in the ring. Again, from my first, it's fantastic. It's not to say that it's too soon for him, because again, I think he could definitely be one of those people who a title reign as he starts is probably a big push for him and would be very good for him and fit very well, and no one would really say, oh, he doesn't deserve that title, blah, blah, blah. I think definitely he's somebody who, if he got that, no one would really be complaining about it. However... I don't think WWE is going to break Pete Dunne's monumental, like, 500-plus day reign. I think they're going to have him keep it for a little bit longer. Hopefully, he'll defend the championship on the main roster a bit. There's a lot of great guys on the main roster who I could see going for that championship that would definitely do some good work against him. Uh, Jack Gallagher, Finn Balor, um, somebody else in my mind whose name I can't fucking say or who's, I can't put my finger on their name right now. Um can't think of his name i just legitimately cannot think of his name right now and i'm fucking completely drawing a blank but there's a lot of people that i can see pete dunn defending that championship against on the main roster on nxt uk on nxt um that would do some good work against him in those matches so i just don't think they're gonna take pete the championship off pete dunn just yet i'm not saying he's gonna keep the reign going for that much longer i think honestly the next takeover right after this he's probably gonna lose it which would be whatever the takeover before Money in the Bank's going to be this year. I don't know if they're doing Money in the Bank in Chicago again. But I think that would probably be the, the one that's like, okay, if this is where he's going to lose it, this would be the time for him to lose it, you know. Um, I don't think he's going to lose it here. It would be a good idea to have him lose it here, but I also think that maybe they're going to pull him up to the main roster permanently where he's going to be main roster for good um, with the champion with the UK Championship and start defending it on paper, actual pay-per-views. Um, and I just can't see them taking off of him here and then deb making his main roster debut, if you know what I mean. I think they're going to have him win, debut on the main roster, face some people on there, po possibly lose it to somebody like Walter or Tyler Bate or Trent Seven or somebody later on down the line, um, and then have him go for a higher up championship. I definitely think he's a future world champion, um, and I really like what Goran Perkins have been doing with their universe mode where they have... Um, 
Paul Heyman being his manager, I think that would definitely be something that would be very possible and actually make sense. Um, not that Pete Dunne's not good on the mic. He's fantastic on the mic. I just think having Paul Heyman behind him would be like, holy shit, this guy's a big fucking deal. All right, next we have the NXT Tag Team Championship match, the War Raiders versus Aleister Black and Ricochet. Um, I kind of gave, gave my prediction for this away already, and that is the War Raiders. Not, again, not to say Aleister Black and Ricochet don't deserve it. They do. They're fantastic in the ring together. They actually have great tag team chemistry, which is very surprising for a tag team that just kind of got thrown together. However, I think they're going to win this. I, I think they have a, a good possibility of winning the SmackDown titles on Sunday. And if they win the NXT Tag Team Championships tomorrow, there is definitely no way that they're winning Sunday. So it's kind of like, it's kind of a catch-22 on WWE's part. Maybe they really do want to put the NXT Tag Titles on Aleister Black and Ricochet, but then they're like, fuck, we've already have them in another match. So it'd be obvious they'd be losing that match or something like that. Um, either way, I think they're fantastic, and I think they actually definitely deserve some titles together they're again they're great in ring chemistry surprisingly for two people who you wouldn't really think would have a lot of in ring chemistry it's kind of like a Cesaro Sheamus sort of situation where when they first started their best of seven series you're like okay this is kind of you know what I mean it was kind of just a random thing and then they got thrown together as a tag team you're like this is never gonna work and now they're five-time tag team champions and it's like okay that works a lot better than I thought it was going to um, and I think that's very much, very much the situation with Aleister Black and Ricochet. They got thrown together. They've gone for lots of, um, lots of championships already. They've, they've gone for, I think, everything so far. I think this is the only one they haven't gone for is this tag team championship, the NXT tag team championships. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited to see this match. Either way, any way it turns out, especially and same with Sunday's um, SmackDown Tag Team match. I really hope the Revival get a match on Sunday. Um, doesn't matter who it's against. I just think the Revival deserve to have a showing at Mania. They're fantastic in the ring, and for all the jokes I make about fuck the Revival and shit like that, they're a fantastic tag team, and I don't think anybody can deny that they're a fantastic tag team. Um, and they deserve to be on the Mania card. I don't care who they face. Just put them on the Mania card against a formidable tag team. All right, and finally, the NXT Championship match, the vacant NXT Championship match. We had Johnny Gargano versus Adam Cole, baby. And this was a hard one for me to predict. This was a very, I think this is the one I was like, okay, who do I really want to win this match? Who do I really think is going to win this match? And it took me a lot of thinking, and I'm still not 100% sure if I think, that, if I think he's going to win. But I have gone with Adam Cole. I'm still not confident in that, by the way. I don't think I'm going to be confident in that at all. Uh, even tomorrow when I'm watching, I'm not going to be confident in that choice. But here's my thinking. Johnny Gargano is debuting on the main roster very soon. I, 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 I don't see that not happening. I, I definitely see him shooting up on the main roster very soon. Uh, and being an actual main roster player. Probably upper mid card going for world championships in the future. Definitely going for IC and United States gold. Um, Maybe reforming DIY on the main roster. I know they've teased it. They teased it on NXT during the uh, Dusty Classic. However, Tommaso being injured, they kind of had to have a storyline write him off, um, which was Johnny attacking Tommaso. But I definitely could see Johnny and Tommaso reforming on the, the main roster. Uh, I mean, the Shield reformed, and no one ever thought they were going to, except me. I, I, had, I always had it in the back of my mind, the Shield's going to reform at some point. But here's my thinking. Adam Cole and the rest of the Undisputed Era all with championship gold around their waists. Here's what I'm thinking. Adam Cole wins this match. Next takeover event, the Undisputed Era, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly win the tag titles back from the War Raiders. And Velveteen Dream gets dethroned by Roderick Strong for the NXT North America Championship. Meaning, the four main men's titles on NXT are all held by the same group. Because we haven't seen that a whole lot in the past. There's not a whole lot of times when all the championships for a brand are held by the same faction. Hell, this could even lead to them bringing a female member in, like Marina Shafir or Jasmine Duke. Probably Shafir if it's going to be anybody because she's married to Roderick Strong in real life. And potentially having the women's championship added into that as well. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing somebody from the UK scene 
potentially coming to the SPD era, but I think that's going to bog it down. I think six members would probably be perfect. Or sorry, five members would probably be perfect uh, with a female member and then the four men um, all holding championship gold in NXT. I know it's a very big pipe dream, but I, I definitely think Adam Cole is winning this at least. Um, I would love to see Johnny win it. Honestly, either way this goes, I'm not going to be mad. Again, this whole pay-per-view is kind of like, no matter how this goes, I'm going to be happy because this all looks fantastic. I can see a lot of stories playing out from anybody winning any of these matches. Um, and I think Adam Cole and Johnny Gargano both have the exact same amount of chance of winning this. Like They're both very high potential of winning this. Either way, I'm very excited. Um, I hope either way that this went, this goes, whether Cole wins or Gargano wins, the storyline pays off and it's something fantastic. Maybe have Tommaso, when he comes back from injury, cost Johnny or something. Um, cost him the championship and the championship defense or something like that um but yeah i'm very excited and so my picks for those of you who had difficulty following along adam cole war raiders pete dunn velveteen dream Kyrie sane uh i will see you all like saturday ish for the review um probably saturday morning maybe um and tonight i'll probably be recording the mania predictions Ooh, I'm very scared about recording the Mania Predictions tonight. Uh, those might go up Sunday morning. I'm not sure yet. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you all in the next one. Stay golden. Peace.